Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are playing as Bratia. Now, this is pretty close to where we left off yesterday, but last time, at the end of last episode, we went to ma war with Magadan, but then these guys up here in the Divine, Mandate of Siberia, has decided to, well, not have a good time with us, but they also went to war, apparently, with, uh, well, pretty much everyone here. So, uh, let's see. Bratia, Yakutia versus Magadan and Divine Mandate. The Divine Mandate has gone really, really crazy, but let us go ahead and do our next focus. In which we, well, just a few comments, but let us do the Man of God. The liberation of Chita, Magadan, and Amur from the reactionaries was, to most people, the end of the fight for regional control. With socialism ascent and the right in shambles, who could say that there were struggles yet to come? There was one major enemy of the left remaining, and not one that anyone expected. We don't know how it happened, but the preacher, Alexander Mann, or Men, has launched his bid for the reunification of Russia. He's managed to raise a large but ramshackle army of zealots to fight for a communal, almost anarchistic, yet theocratic, society in the frigid reaches of the Far East. Men is no monster, but if he stands in the way of the revolution, he will be stopped with force, which we get more attack, we lose more support, and we get less division attrition. Now, I'll be honest here, I tried this once already off-screen, and it didn't work out so well for us, but right now they've raised up a few divisions behind our lines, so I deployed a division already from our you know, thing here, and we're going to try to get these guys killed off. Because the Divine Mandate has decided to attack us, they've also gone to war with Magadan, so I'm going to assume Magadan is going to fall to them. So instead, I'm going to do my best to conquer as much territory up here, push as hard as I can, and get a united front pushed all the way to Alaman. That is my goal, but we have a message of hope. Fyodor Oglevich Rogov stood in line with the rest of the free inmates, stamping his feet and hugging his arms to his chest for warmth, his breath steaming in front of him in the raw morning air. At the head of the queue, one of the Sablonites handed it out the mail that had recently arrived from Verknudinsk. Pimply and skinny, he was young enough to be Fedor's son. Although he shivered in the cold, Fyodor f hardly felt it. Inside, he was warmed by the hope that he would finally receive word of his family that he had not seen in almost a decade since he was sent to the camps for owning books owned by Marx and Lenin. Forcing his wife and daughter to flee into the West, the Sablonites had been good to him and the other prisoners, giving them new clothes and three meals a day, although they were still being quarantined in the camp. Your name, comrade, asked the boy soldier as Fyodor reached the front. Fyodor told him and was rewarded with a letter. Heart lurching into his throat, he stumbled away to a qu quiet place. Alone, he tore the envelope open, reaching or retching out the letter. It was from his daughter, Iona. For years, he had not even known if she was alive. A dozen emotional surges uh, surging in his mind, like waves on a stormy beach, he began to read, Dearest Papa, we are in Vernudinsk, and now and finally safe. How I wish I had enough paper and ink to tell you of our adventure into the West all those years past, or of the joy my heart felt when I learned that you lived. I had changed a great deal, and am no longer, I think, the girl I was when you knew about me, above all else. I long to hold you in my arms once again. I look forward to the day more than I can say. Pressing his eyelids shut to hold back his tears, Fyodor smiled, feeling the lightness of hope for the first time in years. All of a sudden, the world was much larger again, and there was some small place in it for him. I am no bird, and no nest ensnares me, but we must continue on, my friends. I like reading stories about that. Those are very, very heartwarming, we'll say. So I'm going to keep a couple of divisions here. I just put one division over here to help attack the front. It looks really not that bad, but they got some strong soldiers. Two, 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 two. Actually, five. Another strong one down there. It is what it is. Um, so I'm going to hold. I'm really expecting Magadan to fall to these guys up here. So that's why I want to shift some soldiers around this way, which would be a very good thing. Uh, they want to come up north. Hopefully we can beat them up. Hopefully. Which would be a good thing. Uh, a couple comments. Um, someone asked if I want to play like all of Siberia eventually. It is my goal to eventually. Let's get some more stability. I really want to play Tomsk as we established his life by Shostakovich yesterday. I'll play as him the humanist path, hopefully. Oh, and they're attacking us now. Oh, I like it. Yes, please attack me. Please see what happens. Oh, they put two divisions there. Nice, good. Very good, so we can destroy both of them at the same time, then. Uh, I, I do want to play as pretty much almost every single nation here, just because I think that'd be great. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Russia is such a battle royale that it's we might as well. So, hopefully we'll get there. War against the Holy. The so-called Great Man of the North, or Great Father of the North, has called his legions of disillusioned followers towards our state with the goal of completely disestablishing everything that we've worked so hard for so long to achieve. The peasants of Siberia seem to, work to heed every beck and call that he issues, empowered by his messenger of religion and reaction. This is a to comrade Selvin himself, reevaluating the nature of the role of religion in his envisioned union. Currently, the general policy that we've retained regarding religion is that of secularism. The church and the state are separate, and to each man their faith, if necessary. However, the old Union of Lenin had a strict policy of state atheism, working to eliminate the admittedly problematic influence of religion on secular life. Perhaps we should rethink our approach to religion and its role within the territory that we control, in which we get 7.5% more war support, which would be very nice. Very nice. And they love attacking me so much, so much, so much. Very good, very good. And hopefully we get down there and we can beat them up again and again and again. Or let's just get rid of them. That's really probably what we really, really want in the end. 
Uh, oh, looks like they're shifting some soldiers down. There's only four over here now. That's good to see. Uh, let's get rid of that two divisions down there, and let's move up. Let's just go ahead and move up, as it looks like they are probably going to be battling for Yakutsk very soon. Oh, Magadan is actually expanding. They got some of their territory back. That's good to see. And we almost have this done. We took out those two enemy divisions. We are now at 3,000. They still have up to 10 divisions. They have nine over... Oh, well, I guess Magadan is up to 10. The mandate has up to 9,000. We've killed off quite a few, but we lost already 3,000 ourselves, which is, you know, not ideal, but it is what it is. Take as much territory as we can. Take as many factories and good things like that. I'm going to put you under here. Uh, you guys did that. There you go. That'd be good. You guys, you're just going to shuffle yourself around right here. You actually probably don't even shuffle yourselves around, period. Which would be fine. War planning, political campaigns. I don't think so. Just go ahead and start taking territory. Um, yeah, M Magadan, not super terrible, but the divine mandate, I don't know why. It just... This nation seems like just garbage to fight against. Uh, it's no reason to fear us. Or crack down on op on the opiate. Um, so it was recommended that I might choose some of the Bukharanist wings. Bukharan is dead by now, of course. Like I asked you guys earlier, uh, early in the campaign. But uh, so it's not a bad idea to take some of these paths. But there's no reason to fear us. You know, The war we wage against a father is a stain on the lives of the people. And calls are heard among our comrades completely dismantle the reactionary foundations of religion of this so-called divine mandate stands on. As such, reports are coming in that individual soldiers, platoons, and even entire battalions desecrate churches and other holy sites across Siberia. However, this initiative will have to be overruled. This war is in many ways fought for the heart and mind of the common man. To win them over, the socialist soldier must eliminate the path for, to freedom for the misguided, not kick down the door on the temples. To this end, the barbaric practices of looting and burning, unbecoming of valiant revolutionaries, will be discouraged if needed, forcefully. It gets stability, political power, and more of our own popular support, in which we have some despotism here with Kornilov. Of all people, Kornilov. A. Kornilov. Dimitri, huh? Makarov is up here, too. Hmm. A. Makarov. A peculiar Makarov. We'll go and take that, and if you can, go that way immediately next. We just gotta take as much as we can, cut everything off that these guys have. Well, not and suffering too many losses ourselves. Now, we could try to move in. Here, maybe. We might be able to do an encirclement down here or there, but I really want to see the power struggle continue between Magadan and Yakutia. Tricky dick, there goes Tricky dick. King Kennedy, the Holy Nation together. And it looks like they court Kamchatka, or the Pacific Fleet, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. The Aryan Brother has defeated the Berenskini government, huh? Alright, well, good. Good luck with that. But we might actually be able to blow through this area, cutting up that division off. That's not a bad idea, actually. If you could push it just a little bit further. They do have a level 1 fort here. A little damaged, a little damaged. Very nice. Oh, do we win? Oh, I guess we won. Yeah, let's cut them off. If we can cut them off and take and circle these guys, I think that'd be quite bueno. Not gonna lie, that's quite bueno. Against Tsaris, which was against Cheetah, which is good. Resource extraction techniques, which is good. And uh, it's almost 65. Not quite yet. Let's go ahead and grab some industry, free repair, factory repair speed. How about we grab some? No, it doesn't look like we can grab that. Better artillery. How about that? We haven't done that yet. Basic artillery. So because because we have early artillery. Soft attack is 32, this is attack is 40, and then we can just get upgrades for artillery period. And now we've finished up our land doctrine. Well, at least we did the next one in our land doctrine and our focus. Let's go and grab army reserve training for more defense and organization and more recruitable population factor, which would be very nice. And let's grab this struggle against the theocracy. Alexander Mann has instilled dangerous values in the less educated parts of our nation. The peasantry are riled up, believing that men is here as a savior of the north from the communist forces that surround him. Though we are still at a painful lack of manpower to truly stop everything at once, we are able to divert some of our forces to effectively garrison uppity villages and remind them that Alexander Man is not a savior, merely a man who's dangerous, who dangerous thinks, merely a man who dangerously thinks himself to be one. Very good, very ideal actually. Very, very good. And this is why I do not want to go to war with Yakutia yet, just because... Oh, well, we're fighting war together, basically. Oh, hello. Yeah, no, keep them in place. I'm, if I can, I'm just going to circle every division I can find. And just kill them off. That's a goal here. Uh, oh, 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 okay, we have another battle. Okay, cool. Very nice, very nice. I don't want Mag Magadan to fall. They're still fighting, so... I just cannot afford them to fall too quickly. Because that obviously would not be very ideal for us. Or anyone, really. Beautiful. Take him out. Now, Maga, Magdagachi is surrounded, which is not ideal, so uh, move in, and then do that. There you go. 
Um, I could take these guys out. I think they're still holding pretty decently up there, so we're going to keep it okay for now. Uh, how is this going? You guys are doing okay against that division. Uh, you've already won against them. Actually, if you do... Uh, which way are they going? Okay, he's been elected. That's nice. If you just go up there, you might be able to encircle them that way. Oh, crap. There goes... Ooh, that is not ideal. How are you not winning here? You guys hold, then. You know what? You gotta push these guys in. I think that's the only way we can do it right now. Get rid of this division. Magadan has to hold for now. Please don't let them fall. Where are they going? Oh, a little bit of lag. And there goes Kennedy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, let me do that. That'd be good. This is not ideal. This is really, really not ideal right now, honestly. Really not ideal. Alright. And next, focus. A war of restraint. While enthusiastic about socialism, the people are not clearly enthusiastic about this war. The residents of the Far East, many of them religious, have great sympathy for Alexander Men and his movement. They will recall fondly the charity and self-sacrifice of the worshippers and may even call, have friends and relatives who heeded the call to arms. The leadership understands, too, that Men is a man who means well but has a very different belief system than ours. His followers are not Nazis and must be treated, not be treated as such. Even if they don't cut back down, we will give them a war in the spirit of the God, gentle, humane, and res with respect for their combatants. Yes. Let's see what happens. Well... It looks like we're going to kill those divisions off. That's nice. Don't you dare encircle me here. Don't you flip and dare. Get to Zaya. That's fine. Uh, you got to move up north. we got to take as much territory as possible off these guys. Kill them off as fast as possible. Which way are they going here? That's fine. Let them move. I just At this point, I just want to encircle as many enemy divisions as possible. I don't want to kill these guys off too much. I really need them to, to do really well, actually. Just to hold on for now. And they've been cut off. Okay. Let's help them out. I just want them to hold out. They are the basically the one thing that's helping us out right now in terms of not getting completely destroyed. Uh, can you actually win here now? You might be able to, actually. Okay, never mind. I lied. Or I didn't lie. The game lied to me. Oh, that's a, that's a big tile. That's a big boy tile. Alright, I said stop. Please. Please stop. Please. Thank you. Come again. We could have gone up there and then to attack this way, but we're going to wait. Good. Let them back down. Back them off. Back them off. Yeah, I definitely don't want to get rid of these guys yet. Um, if they take that tile, I mean, I'm not too opposed to that, I suppose. I kind of would like that tile back, though. It might give us some more factories. That'd be nice. Uh, so, we're going to have to do this. I'm going to get rid of this. we got to train some of this division. Get rid of the recon. I just need soldiers on the front. So, go two. There you go. And lower you. That'd be good. That'd be nice. There we go. So this way we can have at least a few more soldiers, and we can upgrade these soldiers later on. I should, probably should have made some more of these soldiers earlier, but you know, it is what it is, whatever. Uh, War of Restraint. That is not looking ideal. Oh, shnikes. Um, they're almost there. Take the province first. See what you can do. Um, hmm. Actually, can you go that way? Please kill them off if you can. They might, they're probably going to circle us. But let's do Pacification. We don't get much from this side, so pacification. Men's army is maybe the most unusual we've ever fought. For, um, far from hardened NKVD officers or fascist cutthroats, they're largely not career soldiers and have only recently picked up arms. Most are simply peasants led, inspired by men's words to fight for a better world and the spirit of God and Christ. A commendable instinct. Even if they are misguided, we must treat them well. Soldiers will be instructed to follow strictly the laws of war and take prisoners whenever possible. They may resist and it will certainly be difficult, but we are socialists and, they've, oh, and we have always had to fight as hard as possible to lead the people to freedom, even when, when they resist. We must be better so that they can be too. Uh, I can't... Why can't I deploy... Oh, well, because we don't have really many of them ready to go. It's fine. You better move your booties. Alright, so it looks like these guys are pretty much done fighting me for now. I'm going to send actually half of you guys here. And you guys are actually have a better front line, hopefully. Uh, I'm actually going to send you over here. Get up here. Move, move, move. Oh, oh go up there, maybe. There you go. Because we got to save this division. These guys are going to get surrounded, which is going to be really bad for us. You know, they're really well strength. Fairly well strength. Okay, if that's the case. Go here. Attack them immediately. You gotta break through. Break through. You gotta break through. There's no waiting. And are they? Why are they attack? Why are they fighting me? Like th it doesn't make any sense. Oh, wait, hold on. What the hell's going? Why are you? Mm. Oh, we gotta reorganize all this stuff. Hold on. Hold the phone. So you guys are here. 
Alright. Maybe except for you two. You guys are all going to stay right here. Something like that. You know, not too bad. You guys. Right there, basically. Basically right there. There we go. And actually, do we, do we win? No? Why, why did you stop? That, that does not compute. Why did you stop? Just because we form a front line doesn't mean you stop. That doesn't make any sense. If you can win, that's great. If you can't, you know, so be it. Uh, I need those factories, though, so you can't take them. Even though Magadan is still holding on. That's good. That's good. And it looks like we're still sort of winning here. So that's good as well. As long as they don't move in there. Do not let them move in there. Come on. Move, 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 move. Yeah, seriously. This enemy, he's overpowered. Or something. I don't know, man. Pacification. Let's go ahead and do reintegration. Our attempts to fight Alexander the Men's hordes of believers humanely have been successful, but now we have a new problem. A large population of fervently indoctrinated peasants in our custody. And little idea of what to do with them. These, po these people, although not treated badly, yearn to join the Brethren at the front and will likely cause unrest if we allow them to. Although it may not be palatable to, to some of our, in our government, the captured peasants will need to be reintegrated into the social system. Forced labor is not an option. Exploiting their labor would make us no better than the capitalists we seek to replace. Reeducation, performed with a tact and understanding, followed by some amount of government assistance, will hopefully ease our door of men's former. Conscripts. Good. Hey, and actually, can we get in there? Can we actually get in there in time? That'd be awesome. Alright, so we, that's good. That Magadan is still slowly expanding this way. That's fine with me. Um, Get up there as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally actually okay with that. I'm totally okay with that, actually. But I need Zaya. I need to have it. Help him out. Push him back. Okay, so they're out of there. That's good. We, I just want to encircle their divisions and destroy them. Hey, but that look at that GDP. It means not much to us, but... It's there, to say the least. Alright, so we got the division here. That's kind of okay. I want to at least rescue my division. That'd be quite ideal. Uh, cool. Uh, where are you guys going? Yeah, you guys can continue coming up here, but... At this point, we need to find encirclements and just kill them off. Uh, you guys can do that. Let's go up here and do that. I want to encircle that division if possible, even though it looks like they're moving out. Zaya, we're still fighting there, whatever. Magadan is getting dangerously close to capitulating, which is not ideal. Really not ideal. Oh, yeah, there goes Hadrian's Germany. Come on, hurry up. Hey, oh, we actually, oh, okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this then. We encircled two enemy divisions. That is quite ideal. Then you don't need to move up north, go this way. That is great. That is really, really great. So we've lost 7,000. They've lost a total of 29,000. So I say we're doing pretty darn well. And now we're done with our focus tree, unfortunately. Well, not focus tree. But our focus is for now, since we don't have very many more options to do with that stuff. Uh, could you guys not lose, maybe? Like, they should be getting, like, almost no supplies. Because this is not a very big victory point. So, yeah, that'd be nice. Let's go ahead that way. Cut all these guys off. Alright, guys, come on. Come on. The infrastructure really isn't that bad. It's a little defeated, but poor... Well, crap. Well, if you want to read about that, I don't want to read about that. I've already read about it like two or three times a day, even though you didn't see me read it. Um, well, that's not good. Hey, point zero three. even though we're going to lose stuff. Decapitate the Serpent. Uh, for all his mental prowess, he did not save Matovsky and his wretched ilk when we flew the flag over Magadan and proclaimed our victory. With Matovsky captured, his crown shall be listed and we'll... The will of the people shall be heard, and the fate shall be determined swiftly. And the rest of his insidious gang shall follow with. There will be no mercy shown to fascism, whether its roots dig. It only brings suffering, and here, the fate of it will be determined. Will be locked away into the irrelevance, or will we burn it out? Well, let's see what happens. Uh, if we can do this. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'm going to hold it. You might as well do it, though. Amur, yes, that's a core, core Amur, if possible. That'd be awesome. You guys, I want you to come up here, actually. Uh, actually, you know what? Go there, too. Move up north. Because we're going to have to... We're, not, we're probably going to lose Magadan, let's be real. How many divisions I left? Seven and nine. We gotta at least encircle and destroy these two divisions here. Begin assaulting them immediately. There's no waiting to destroy these divisions. It has to be done now. Political campaign. Get some more. Oh, wait. Oh, crap. No, I chose the wrong one. I don't want to lose stability. Good. Three way fight. Basic artillery. Very nice. Very nice. Let's grab some better artillery so get more soft attack. Yes, please. That would be great. I'm not going to upgrade this yet because we're probably still in our deficit. Never mind. And with them capitulating, we got more artillery. Love it. Go ahead and start conquering all this territory so that's the way they have nowhere else to really attack us. So it is so difficult to see these different areas here. Go ahead and do that as well. 
Oh, this is still not good. Still not good. Still not good. Go there if you can. So we can circle that division. That'd be nice. We have a total of seven. Hopefully we'll do okay. I'm really hoping we do okay, man. You know what? You hold him there. Can we do that and that? That's all we have to do to encircle another division. At least, if we can, encircle Amur. That would be very good. Decapitate the serpent. Well, we'll get a trial very soon, and we're done with the focus here again. So the trial of Mikhail Matovsky. Ah, uh, this court of soldiers and workers finds you, Mikhail, guilty of crimes against the socialist revolution and the common people of Russia. Drawn a brawn from the bench in the Galilee, the audience jeered and flung insults at Matovsky. Three days of tearful interviews with the recently liberated inmates of the camps had erased any hopes for clemency that the tyrant may have been holding out for. Salman watched with a smirk as Matkovsky clenched his fists and ground his teeth, staring at Brown with bulging eyes. For your crimes, the escort sentences you to 20 years of rehabilitative labor and the service of the revolution, finished Brown. Clasping his hands, he looked down at his nose at Matkovsky. Have you anything to say? Yes, spat Matkovsky, shouting, shooting to his feet to a chorus of ridicule from the galley. gallery. I reject the legitimacy of the so-called court. This is nothing more than a Bukharanist show trial of travesty of justice. Under what authority do you try me? Filled with sudden rage at the tyrant's weaseling, Salvin snatched the carpenter's hammer they were using as a gavel and slammed it against the bench. The bang erupting throughout the hall like a gunshot. Much to his satisfaction, the fascist flinched. Standing and filling his voice with vitriol, Salvin said, Tyrant Mikovsky, we trial you by the authority of the workers and peasants who you oppressed. Here them fascists, they cry out for justice. Thrusting his arms in the direction of the galley, he was rewarded with a cacophony of yelling and stomping of the gathered masses. After that, Matkovsky was dragged away, screaming threats that went ignored. Grinning ferociously, Sablin felt himself lifted up uh, by the joy of the triumph and the adultation of the crowd. The scourge of the east had been cast down by his hand. Now he could turn his gaze to the west. Soon all of Russia would be soon free of tyrants and oppressors. Fascism is capitalism plus murder. Well, I don't know about that. But it is for the good of the revolution. Oh, look at this. What do we have here? Build. Ah, yes, build new schools. Let's get agricultural stuff. I don't think we've done that one yet. Secure control. Let's let's offset our lowering of stability that way. <gasps> yes, another division. Good. Good, 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 good. Move up. So as we're gonna use this as kind of a backdrop for them to take more territory for now. I need you to hold these guys in place. That's good. If we can get there quick enough, that'd be awesome. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just all come here. Oh, they died. Awesome. Now I'm gonna redeploy the entire line here, which is fine with me. God dang it, they actually got out. Um, this is gonna be this is gonna really suck. But you know what? With an extra division in charge here, I think we'll do okay. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, take it out, take it out. I'm glad we have that division to get rid of. That'd be good. Good, good, good. Are they done? Yes, they are. So we've got a full line here, but not enough divisions. Sounds pretty normal, to be honest with you. Go if you can. Go, 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 go. Actually, if anything, since they aren't doing much there, I'm going to send you guys to go that way. But really, you are going to go here to here. There you go. We'll try that. We'll try to encircle another division. We've destroyed two divisions, so they're five to seven, and we have eight. Whew, man, this is... I'll be honest. I spent half an hour, like, playing this before I... Well, before I'm recording this one, and it did not go this well. I mean, my goodness, it was... It was really just straight up trash. And that's why I don't show you everything I do in these campaigns, just because sometimes the campaign doesn't go very well. Ah, 64 Tokyo Olympic Games got, comes to an end. Tokyo's left quite the impression. Very good for you guys, very good. Uh, well, okay then. Go there first. Cool, hey, another division, great. Dockyards? Eh, some convoys. I, I'm not really going to focus on too much here for that stuff, but that's okay. Uh, what are we missing? Do we got plenty of artillery still? And we're actually very positive on that. We need guns and RPGs. So we got enough of that. We have enough of that. We need some support. Do we need support equipment? Mm -hmm. We're kind of okay. We're kind of okay. Hmm. Uh, good. Very good. We don't have quite a billion, but, you know, 0.03 of a billion. That's not bad. And maybe encircle them, if you can. Uh, I really don't want to see them here. I really actually want to go this way. Oh, sh Nikes. Should not have done that. It's okay. Just head on over there. You'll be fine. Go there, and then you do that. See what you can do. We have no other divisions around here? Like, what's going on, man? No, they're just still standing there. So go here, and then go there, and then do that. Against a theocrat, that's okay. 
You guys are taking forever to move. Come on, you got chubby little legs. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. And what are you doing? Taking forever. Ah, I see. Taking forever. And they're gonna try to encircle me. Okay. Well, you guys go there, there then. Another division must die. Good for them. We lost support. I don't really care about that. I really don't. It means nothing to me. You know what? Kill them off there. You know what? Just go right there. That's all you need. A couple more divisions. Nice. Very nice. You know what? That, all I'm doing is just keeping them there for now. There we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Boom. Bingo was probably his name-o. You got a division right there? I don't think so. I don't think so, son. You're taking you're taking too long. I mean, seriously. Move your legs. Oh, we lost some billions. Whatever. Infrastructural reserve. Better supply, Grace. Less out of supply. Good, 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 good. Trainer troops. No, we're good for now. We're good. Low manpower. What do you guys expect? Seriously, what do you expect in the... Interlands here. We have no planes still. That's fine. Good, good, good. Go right there. That's fine. Defeat everything they have. I mean, that's just that's just the goal of ours right now. Keeping them in place for now. That's fine with me. Yakutsk shall be ours. Good. Can we actually get up here? Eh, let's go there for now. That's fine. Good. Two more divisions. Destroy them. Four to six divisions left. Nice. Very nice. Hey, we captured it. So, I didn't read earlier, so as our troops rushed past the Far Eastern frontiers, the assault on the enemy lands was halted only by the sea. The Great Pacific opened and wide and met our men after a bloody battle as the port of Magadan has come under our control. The icy and choppy waters stretched for miles in every direction in front of them. The mysterious stretch of Siberian waters was a home too far by the most significant port in the eastern Russian wastes. A hub of trade and smuggling with a particular taste for Japanese and American goods, the port of Magadan opens up greater opportunities for administration to not only trade wares, but also makes a name for ourselves across the globe, indeed. With this invaluable port under our control, we pray to see our foot in the door to international recognition and trade, which helps let's get some, you know, dockyard stuff, stuff like that, but it really doesn't matter since we're not really going to be doing that too much, but we can scavenge for more loot, which is a good thing. A very, very good thing. Keep going, guys. You're doing a great job. We crush those divisions. Nice. Nicely done, my friends. And move up north. Actually, taking out Magadan, or when they took him out and we got their resources, was great. All that extra artillery and motorized and support equipment was just... That was actually really beneficial for us. That was incredibly beneficial. Honestly, too beneficial compared to what these guys did for us. So, where are you guys going? You're still doing well against them. Keep going, guys. You're doing a great job. What are you doing? Yeah, I just go to, go there. How far are they? Could, oh, they're about halfway. 54%. That's not bad. Vyatka's defeated the Aryan Brotherhood. That's nice to see. Very nice. Very nice. I'm just going to tell you to go all the way up to here. And then, since they record this, we got to tell them to go, probably go down there. It's fine, whatever. Ah, they met some resistance. Good for us. Oh, and we've met some resistance as well. But that's okay. That is certainly okay by us, because we have another division as well under our sleeves. And after this war, we're going to definitely have to upgrade these guys. Oh, seriously? Come on. That's not cool. You know what, that's the case. Go up here. Screw that. We're going straight and circle you. As we try to take out your capital as quickly as possible. It is what it is. So much political power. Wow. Could train our troops, but... Mm, I don't know. We get a thousand manpower. That's not bad. I guess we could do it. Why not? We could try it. Cool, grab some of this, put you over here now, and then we're gonna do maybe better infantry equipment. Let's get some improved infantry rifles. I like AK 47s. They're very nice guns, but happy 1965, my friends. It's definitely gonna be a new year for us. It's gonna be quite the year, to say the very least. Quite the year. Help them out on this side. Very nice. At least we're making more divisions, they're not great. Oh, there's a coup in Scotland. The light finally goes out. Oh. Seriously? I mean, come on. They. They should have died there, probably, right? 61,000. Um, how many more men do you want to lose, man? Seriously. Getting all the way up there. It looks like we're going to do pretty well at this point, so that's good. Hopefully. I'm going to go that way. It's so hard to see, like, the little tiles between areas here. Very hard to see. Usk Neta? 
Anything else? Siberian Black Army is probably either going to try to kill us or Tomsk. Hopefully, go to war with Tomsk. Bennett is inaugurated. Well, good luck. Good luck. War planning. We have enough political power now. I kind of don't mind maybe getting infrastructure, but industrial investments, 10% consumer goods. There's a chance we'll get some civilian or military factories. Let's try it. Let's try it. So, since we have 10% more, we're actually still doing pretty well on building up more, or more civilian factories, we should say. It's not bad. They, they should capitulate soon enough. 76% of the way there. Two divisions. They have two. And we're looking pretty good at factories. Not bad at all, my friends. Not bad at all. Keep going. Oh, there's the two divisions, so... Let time go on, and we shall have them done, and dusted, and completed. Uh, I'll go and tell you guys to go back there. There you go, something like that. Keep them in place. We can't win over the river, probably, but that's okay. The goal isn't to win right now, just to do the best we can. Holding them in place. Let time go on, and let's just go and reap and get as much political power as possible. Artillery. What would happen if I threw on artillery on these divisions? Hey, we did it! We did it. Okay, that was so... Oh, my goodness. Like I said before, I did it off-screen once, and it made me rage. It was not very good. But anyways, the trial of Alexander Men. With the recent capitulation of some of the last of pseudo Platov's most loyal men, our soldiers have captured men and brought them to our capital. While some of the more radical and reactionary politicians bay for blood, this man deserves a proper trial. Comrade Sablin himself has had some conflicting feelings on what to do with a religious mystic who has not said a single word since his arrival. It would be unfair to kill this man or imprison him indefinitely without a trial after all. Father Man, or Father Man, is no bandit king or reactionary disguised as a revolutionary. He is a man who desires the best of his people, even if his vision is fundamentally misguided and highly misinformed. Thus he will be subject to the people's justice, and only then will we decide the fate of the Father. There we go. And we actually did really well, my friends. I'm actually really glad that this is done. We finally did it. We actually exacted justice for what we needed. Uh, do this instead. I doubt we'll fight the Siberian Black Army. We're probably going to have to fight Tomsk, let's be real. Now we can integrate all this stuff, but let us form the Far Eastern Free Soviet Republic. The free one, and we get a free research slot. Overextended administration, we remove the National Spirit Peasants' Uprisings. This is going to be beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. But we have an overextended administration, which is not good. Bratia unifies the Russian parties. Is that a real picture of Soblin? That actually might be. Huh. Can idealism survive in these dark times? Potentially. Now we can do four, in which we can get way more cores. World development. Regional development. We can... Oh, God, yes. We can improve areas here, which I love. And we have the GDP mechanic unlocked, which is one of my favorite things. Unfortunately for you guys, I'm going to be looking at that, at that a whole lot. And we get so many cars. Yes, yes, yes. Support weapon three? Why not? Uh, actually, you know what? First, let's wait. Let's do something else. We're still doing that. It is 65, which means industry can be improved. It's military, civilian, factory construction speed. Yes, please. We're going to about have so many goods. Warlord recruitment is done. And we can now spend a lot on our GDP. So we have a deficit. Um, this is probably not good for me to decrease the budget for now, but we're going to do that, because I don't want any more deficit. Military spending? Cut it cut as well. I don't want deaths. I don't want deficits. Eh, I got some naval XP, which means nothing, honestly. It really doesn't mean very much. Look at all these garbage ships. Uh, early cruisers, early stuff. I don't mind making a sub, though. It's not bad. It's really hard to see, like, the designs. and what, uh, We don't have that much. That's fine, just go to make that, then. Uh, just make one. There you go. There you go. I'm just going to grind out army XP, or naval XP, I mean, because we can. And currently we're losing 0.6 a day. Wow, that's a lot. Hey! Goring has won! Okay! Well, good good job, Goring. Thumbs up. Almost 10 billion in GDP. That is that is nice. That is, that's pretty nice, man. Not going to lie. Neutral state of Vologda defeated the West... Oh. Goring wins the German Civil War, Child of Alexander Men, cool, and a beacon of freedom. It wasn't an easy path, nor a short one, but now that the misguided fathers stands defeated and the perfidious fascists are shattered, we now find ourselves in control of what was once known as the Russian Far East. Already our dedicated soldiers, commissars, and ideologues are working hard on spreading our message of revolution far and wide through the vast Siberian territories. We've begun what many are currently referring to as a Red Spring throughout the East, our soldiers bringing liberation and the message that a new revolution is here to stay. As Comrade Sablin and his closest confidants continue to prepare for the liberation of all of Russia, the future of the Far East and the Russians in general continue to, be, to brighten, and many, for the first time in the recent memory, 
Henry, Sea of Brave Hope were a derelict, reactionary union once dominated leftist political thought. Stability, Red Sun Rising, and slightly decreased scoring time, which is nice, but the trial of Alexander Men. Head cocked back. Has Sadlin gazed down through narrowed eyes at Father Alexander Men. Heavily built and impressively bearded, men sat in the dock in the priest's vestments. His only concession to vanity, a golden cruciform necklace. Breathing tranquil, he looked ahead in a state of apparent serenity, one end resting lightly atop the other. Salvin wondered if the state of his mind was as peaceful as his exterior would lead one to believe. Truth be told, Salvin couldn't quite figure out men. He wasn't a tyrant, an evil man. Although he seemed to believe in the best interests of the Russian people, he also fought against a social revolution. Having once been a member of the pro proscribed catacomb church, he continually held that the Christianity, not, not socialism, would be Russia's salvation. A good man at heart, but also misguided. Religion was, as Lenin had so famously said, the opiate of the masses. The Russian people would never be free until they liberated themselves from the bishops and their sect. Sakharin lies. Alexander Vladimirovich Men began brawling, as Ellen noticed how men didn't even tense the slightest as his sentence was read out. This court of soldiers and workers finds you guilty of crimes against the socialist revolution. You are hereby sentenced to two years and six months of rehabilitative labor and service of the revolution and dismissed. Standing men silently made the sign of the cross. He went with dignity, allowed the soldiers to take him outside without resistance, not glancing back as though afraid of being transformed into a pillar of salt. Ellen couldn't help but notice the subdued mood of the galley or the gallery. They seemed to have been hoping for more of a show. Men had been an enemy of socialism and needed to be punished, but that didn't mean that he had to be cruel about it. As Petro had once said to him, the strength of the revolution came from the clemency, not from bloody-handed retribution. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath, it leads only to evil. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. Nice job, guys. Uh, at this point, I might actually have these guys trained. And when they capitulated, did we get anything of that? Uh, howitzers. We got some guns. That's not bad. We got some motorized. England joins Einhots Pact. England picks a side. Oh. Thatcher and Goring are working together. Okay. Oh, we need some more support equipment now. Support equipment and anti tank stuff. Anti tank. Howitzers looking good. Guns looking pretty good as well. Do that. There we go. Not bad. And which we. I still want to get some motorized eventually. But maybe we'll build some APCs and some planes first. We'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what... Oh, another division. Great. They'll go where you need to go. And actually, I lied. I have everyone hold first. Get to where they need to be on the line. I'm going to convert all you guys actually to this division template. Because even though... Oh, we're going to need more. We're going to need a lot more of everything. I still want to have a very good army. Not a massive army. Just a good one. And now we shall have a new focus tree. The red sun rising laying in the square outside the Vernudinsk Opera House with the Chiro, Makiv, and Ulanoshkaya. Southern tried to belch out the international, but barely got past the third note when he starts uncontrollably giggling, settling his comrades off too. Rolling onto his belly, Southern drunkenly pawed for the vodka bottle, but kept it rolling away from him. That made him laugh too. Slipping over back, over his back, Southern gazed into the sky, watching as Black Knight slowly gave way to the gray pre-dawn. Pre he smiled at himself, vaguely wondering how many bottles of vodka he'd drunk since he signed the treaty, forming the far eastern Soviet Republic the night before. That was pretty much the only thing he remembered from the past 12 hours. He had no doubt he'd made quite the fool of himself during the party, but what did it matter? Even if they ca had cause to celebrate, this was it. Grinning like a lunatic, Southern imagined what the party would look like when they took Moscow. Look, comrades, shouted Makiv, pointing to the sun as it created over the horizon. A red sun rises. The heavens themselves turn out for the revolution. That got a ragged cheer from Southern and the other half-dozing revelers, still trying to keep the party alive. Staring into the redding sky, Southern couldn't wipe the grin from his face. Against the most uh, impossible odds, they had succeeded. They cast down the Terrence, lighting the torch of the socialist revolution across the east. Despite their triumph, it wasn't over yet. They still had to bring the revolution west into the lands of the bandits, the madmen, and the oppressors. Looking around him at his closest friends, Salvin realized for the first time that he trusted them implicitly, and the strength that they lent him would allow him to climb any mountain, leap any hurdle. Feeling sober, all of a sudden, Salvin sat up. The party was over. He had to keep the momentum going. The fight isn't over until you win. Oh, really, until we win. Hey, look at this! So we can do reaching out to the world, defending the revolution, anything to the right? Nope. A new Red October and economics of the proletariat. Oh, do this one. The fascist heirs of the White Hobbin have been defeated, and there would be Hetmats and Vaz driven before us in grace. The madmen of the Arctic Circle, addicted, addicted to the opioids of reaction, have similarly been annihilated. Meanwhile, our brothers and sisters in Alden, who stood, uh, stood so bravely against the tyrants of Yagoda, have joined with us. The vast expanses of the Russian Far East have been united under our cause. A new revolution, however, improbable, has begun, and we are ready to fight for it. Now, the reason I decided to move or zoom out of the focus sheet, just to see if there's anything else there. I didn't think there was, but it's always good to, you know, double check on things. Uh, so not looking good, that's okay. And right now, we're still not building anything up, minus 85%, because I cut a lot of the budget down. It is what it is, and we're slowly, slowly, slowly gaining more dispersed, diverse 
ideologies, but tomorrow's ours. Everything from the mutineers' ad hoc headquarters had been cleared out from the opera house, and the chairs put back in the rightful place. So Salvin, or Sabin, but probably Salvin, sitting in front in the front row, it almost looked as though they'd never been there at all. Salvin breathed deeply, listening to the shuffling feet, and remembered voices behind him. The place was packed, everyone coming to see the film, an almost immaculate print of Sergei's, Eisenstein's, Social Masterpiece, Battleship Pol Poltenkin, unearthed from landfill in Irkutsk. As the nights dimmed and the overture began, Salvin squeezed his wife Nadezza's hand. She looked at him, up at him lovingly, and his eyes filled with tears at how lucky he was. It was rapturous. The live orchestra might have been amateurs plunking away at whatever instruments they could scrounge together, but it didn't matter. The emotion coating every frame like brushstrokes on a painting needed no adornment for the film's powerful message of revolutionary hope to be felt. The audience jeered at all the valuable moments. They jeered when the Tsars killed the hero Vakulinchkuk, and Salvin was certainly he heard the sobbing when the baby was killed as its carriage fell out of the control down the Odessa steps. During the ending, the, as the Tsars fleet mutinied and flew the red flag, the audience gave a standing ovation, their cheering drowning out to the orchestra. Salvin looked to the side into the grinning faces of Pichiro and Markiv. Battleship Poltenkin was like an electric charge that rallied anyone who saw it. As the red flag fluttered above the Tsarist dreadnought, Salvin's doubts fell away. The social stream had been crushed once before, but someday soon the red flag would fly once more over Leningrad. Clapping as the, lights of the light faded from the projector, Salvin vowed he'd be the one to raise it himself. To the Rifles Brothers, down with tyranny. Cool. Hopefully it goes all according to plan, even though I don't think we will be actually be able to get all the way to Leningrad or Moscow. I don't think it's in the mod files. It's still somewhat limited in terms of what we can do here, which is unfortunate. But hey, look, our GDP is getting better, though. Minus 45, it's only 45,000 for a deficit. No templates. Oh, I'm making APCs. Okay. Oh, it looks like we cored some of the area here, which is great. So now we have, we're making some APCs, even though we should probably be making more support equipment first. And then some fighters, and then some early tactical bombers. We could actually use artillery again. And more guns, which is not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you know what? Stop lowering your strength for now. You guys can continue, but you guys are looking like you could really use a little bit of a break. We currently get minus 0 .00, 0.00 political power a day, but we have a new Red October. Alright, so the Raise a Banner of Freedom. Defeating Child Vagrancy. Huh. 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 Expanding the party, our poverty rate will begin to improve. I like that. More political power is good as well. Then we get less political power, but then you get more political power. Or raise the flag of Lenin. We get more political power and less stability. The state reduces the strain. The revolution. Poverty rate gets better. I like the poverty rate going lower and lower. Workers decree. Agricultural. Ooh. All trade unions allowed. Reform the Sovnarkom. Infantile disorders. Protect proletarian democracy. I want to go down with the revolution to get our society poverty rate better. So raise the flag of Lenin. Amidst the chaos of war, tyranny, and calamity, the ideals that drove the Great October Revolution have uh, too often been forgotten. Oh crap, what the heck is going on? Uh, now though, we have the opportunity to resurrect them. Let's go back to the original writings of Comrade Lenin, without whom none of this would be possible, and build a new state based upon his wise words. Though the ideals of Leninism, or through them, we can rise from the far stretches of Siberia and bring all of Russia into the revolution once more. Very good. I love having three research slots. Let's go ahead and do comprehensive strategic analysis for more planning and max planning. That'd be very nice. What do we have here? Oh, we can do all this stuff. Oh, yes, please. Dreams of Federation. Uh, we could have used, gone to war with Yakutia, Using a uh, one of the decisions here, but since we've done this, we can close dreams of a uh, dreams of freedom. So we're actually done there. Nice. And go prepare for war has to be after 69. It's only 65. So wow. Uh, we can start doing some of this stuff. I probably will do this escalate land reform programs just because I want slightly less coring time. That'd be pretty good. Honestly, all this stuff looks really good. We're gonna get it all done eventually. So. Uh... Returning x fast we get more stability. I mm, Weekly stability, though, first for, like, five. We get 10% more when we're done and more war support. Let's do that one first. So, the next moves forward. That night, the Opera House was at maximum capacity. Comrades from every on every floor and chair, the veteran fighters in the fresh, eager blood, gathered to hear Valery Mikhailovich Sablin, Battle of Barcelona. Not talk about that, though. Speak. With him stood his comrades at arms, Mikhail Makhiv, holding the first bottle of the night in hand. Susanna Paturo with her inseparable friend, Maya Olanovskaya, and finally Otto Braun. Seven was the one to carry the winds of the conversation that night, and thus he, for the first, for the blood-spattered territories of Russia and its treacherous past, represented a beacon in the East. Comrades, the Central Committee bickers often, but today we are united, he shouts, anticipating the newcomers even further. Today we are no longer the Baratian Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Today we are something more. We will represent the liberated and the liberators. We will show our increasing strength, and we will make a stand against the tyrant. Tonight, my friends, we will be known as the Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Cheers erupted across the entire opera house, so loud that Southern almost wanted to cover his ears. Markiv slammed 
his back with a powerful yet friendly thump of his hand and grinned towards him with an ever tempting bottle. The rest, Petruro, Olanos. Ilanovskaya and Braun all remained content with silence. The old German merely crackled with a satisfied grin while Sablin and Petruro exchanged awkward glances that quickly mellowed out into trading smiles, or traded smiles. As the shouting died down, Sablin turned once again to face the Central Committee. There's much to do, my friends, I will admit. I am somewhat afraid of the future, but I do know that with the comrades that surround me, he said, motioning an arm to his allies besides and behind him, there will be no reason to fear that what is to come next. So tonight, comrades, tonight is a day to celebrate the freedom. Very good. And you know what? I'm going to continue making these divisions. I really don't like them, but over time, we can, like, convert them in divisions that we, that we really want, so I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, I could increase GDP a little bit, and I still want to do that. More construction speed moderately increases GDP is not bad. To get more to the depth, I don't really care. Popularity of the government. We get actually political power. Let's do this one because we get more daily political power for two months. And increase the ability of our industrial expertise and the popularity of our government. I mean, that just sounds good overall. 0.27. The Syrian Barian Black Arm is not doing well. It's fine. Whatever. It's fine with me. 27 still. Does that change at all? No, maybe not. Hmm. Over here, we're still building relatively well. And we have 15 million in terms of annual deficit. So that's really not bad at all for now. For now, of course. Mm, call me Republic, declare war on... Ah, part of the Buryats. Ah, there goes the Black Siberian Black Army. Kemerovo. Hello, Kemerovo. Oh, you are split by Tomsk. Oh, that is... Unfortunate, to say the least. But anyway, like so many of the native folk of the Tsars had subjugated in their endless push to the Pacific, the Buryats were a proud but deeply wounded people, their way of life mercilessly crushed beneath marching boots, thundering locomotives, and roaring tank treads. Uh, every Buryat bore the pain within their hearts, and they longed to reassert themselves to face the world again as a people unfettered by the bonds and traumas imposed upon them. And so it became no surprise to Salvin when Mahiv approached him to request that Vernuding's name be changed to as a token of recognition to the part of the Buryats had played in casting down Yagoda and defeating the tyrants of the East. He suggested the name Ulan Uda, which means the Red Uda, a name for the mighty river that had sustained the Buryat people for the millennia before the arrival of the Russians. Seeing the central government committee's focus turn away from Siberia, Marquis was afraid that the Buryat's part would soon be forgotten as the seat of the revolution moved ever westward. My comrades said Soblin, smiling broadly and laying a reassuring hand on Marquis' sh sh shoulder, without the might of the Buryats, we could never have brought Lenin's light back to Russia. The revolution will never forget your people, for I would not allow it. Ulan Uda, birthplace of the revolution. The correct revolution. Look at that manpower, wow. We were suffering like 30,000, like we, that's all we have. But now we're doing pretty well. Let us raise the flag of Lenin, though. And I really want to get rid of poverty. Poverty is like my number one thing I want to get rid of. The revolution. Comrades, we have not just found a new state. We have not just conquered some petty warlords. We have declared a second October revolution in the name of the workers, peasants, and soldiers of all of Russia and beyond it. It is of the utmost importance that we uphold the ideals of a revolution or all of our work will come to naught and the Russia will remain forever divided. Cool. Very, very cool. So my goal is to make sure that we have a, we don't get too much debt, and also just keep building ourselves up. Now, obviously, once civilian, once I get rid of the slashing I did for the civilian spending, I'm going to keep a moderate amount of a deficit for every year. That's fine with us, even though our annual GDP growth is pretty small compared to our annual debt increase or interest. That's fine with me right now. Uh, I just need to build, so I should have realized that a little earlier. But it is what it is. Very good. The last century, huh? Siberian Central Central Siberian Republic declared war on the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altai. Oh, Komi's looking. Komi's putting in some work. Wow. Another division, huh? Good. Let's cut it down to one. Pakistan becomes interest independent. Very interesting. Very interesting. Nothing there. Uh, for these divisions, they're still twenty combat with, which isn't bad. Siberian Black League, huh? That's really unfortunate for Kemerovo. So pushing towards change. Very good. The state reduces administrative strain, which actually would be very good to get rid of right now. The goes of Bukharin. Overextended administration. That really hurts our consumer goods. It hurts our supply consumption, political power gain. It's probably best to get rid of that now and then go back to raise the banner of freedom. So, despite what some of Yagoda's pro propaganda leaflets may have said, we are not anarchists. A strong state will be necessary to the success of a revolution, and that state must be based on Leninist principles. There must be a democracy based on the will of the people, and there must be an ideological unity based on Marxist science. Only through such a state apparatus can we achieve our ultimate triumph. Yes, please. Let's push towards change, though. Uh, actually, it's from over here. Construction. I want to spend more construction. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and spend more. It's not like we're spending that much anyways on it. 
So that'd be good. At least we're building some more stuff up. So, this time in the cold of the Opera House, there was much more positive tone between Soblin and the members of the Central Committee, as he had shuffled a few papers from his brief gift to his table. Letting the others gaze at it with curiosity, Soblin typed against one paper, or tapped against it. This comrades, he began holding up in his hand, as a copy of the original Soviet decree as to pass an eight-hour workday. The rest are other various laws that were effect of the original Soviet Union. Susanna Petrov nodded. I'm guessing you'll wish to re-implement this decree. What about the rest? The other members of the Central Committee seemed to be content with silence, especially Maya Yu, who only glanced at the papers with a slow, burning interest. Soblin set the paper down. The other ones, the decree on land, decree on workers' control, and so on, will have to readjust to fit the new revolution. Mikhail Markiv looked at Salvin oddly. Readjust? Should these not be perfectly serviceable the way they are? Salvin merely shook his head. No, comrade Markiv, though one of Lenin's first acts was to abolish private property, we have no such luxury here. It will remain as of right now. But in due time, we will tear down all the framework of the capitalist institution. Markiv eyed Salvin warily. And the former Commissar smiled. Trust me, comrade, the revolution will not fall so long as we stand strong. Now there are degrees to implement and work to be done. Yes, and debt to accrue. Lots of debt. Lots and lots of debt. But we'll get... Wow. It looks so close, but it's going to be... It's going to take a while to get that done, man. It's going to take quite a while. And this is just going to go up, 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 up. We're going to spend a lot on this, a lot on that. And there goes military spending. Honestly, with civilian... Uh, let's close it and open it back up. Well, actually, yeah, that's not too bad. Six, that's a little better. It works in July. Yeah, okay, that's not bad for debt. For military spending, um, we're not at war, so there's really no point. I mean, yeah, we could use more output, honestly, right now, but let's keep debt low. Let's keep debt low for now. We could use more guns. We could use more out stuff like this, but I'm going to keep it like this for a while, at least. And we'll do one more focus, and then we'll probably call it an episode, and that'll be good with me. And hopefully you as well. So you guys looking pretty good over here. Uh, you guys looking... How are these guys looking? Uh, they're not looking too bad, actually. Go ahead and convert these guys to this group, which we still don't have enough guns or anything like that, but that's okay. Eventually, they will have enough guns, they will have enough equipment, they will have enough of everything that they will need. And I'm going to get, need to get more political power as well, because we got to improve our GDP and stuff like that quickly. 0.6 a day is really not good. Ah, uh, it matters ideology, but let us... Ooh, that's not bad. I still want to do that, but... Mm, we get some... Well, we'll get more industrial equipment. Slightly increases GDP. More infrastructure is not bad. Uh, let's see. Moderately increases GDP. It's not bad. Bonus for industry. Moderately increases GDP. Industrial expertise. Bonus to industry. Moderately increases GDP as well. Education funding. Moderately increases. Moderately increases. Poverty rate. Slightly increases. Agricultural. Army professionalism might be something that we really want to do. But it doesn't help our GDP. So what I'm going to do is probably choose... 35, for 35 days, we get more weekly manpower, which wouldn't be bad. 3% more stability, a little bit more GDP, and that's not bad. I want to go higher and forward instructors first, just because that seems like a really good thing to do. Just so we can slowly improve ourselves now. Decree on land, 8-hour uh, workday is not bad. Raise the banner of freedom first, and then we will do expanding the party. Because I want to improve the poverty rate as much as possible. The people of Russia do not cry out for a strong or responsive government or Leninist principles. Many simply cry out for peace, stability, and for the promise of their futures that will be brighter than their past. This idea of liberation from the cycles of bloodshed that have characterized Russia for decades must be reached. We must raise a banner of freedom high above our lands. Not just freedom for the worker, but freedom for, from fear for all. Which is a good thing. Let's come over here. And then the matters of ideology. Soblin. He paced the grand stage of the Opera House nervously, even though there were only four pairs of eyes watching him, and the air felt empty with the countless unfilled sleets. Eventually, he stopped up in the middle and sighed, turning his gaze to his comrades. As you all know, the policy of ideological pushback in the previous Union of Socialist Soviet Socialist Republics was treating it with caution and advising party unity. His eyes swiftly moved, uh, moved past Perchuro, but he could see her smile before he looked to Mikhail Mahiv, who raised an eyebrow and crossed his arms. It looked like Marhib wanted to make a comment, but relented. Sullivan took it as an opportunity to continue. I say that we should throw the ways a man can think about the revolution, after all. Should we not be so dogmatic as to outright deny and spit on opinions that are not exactly our own? Marquise seemed to take in Sullivan's words, but Malaya Yu cut in first, surprisingly enough. I believe, though, Lenin was right in the streets of Italian party unity. Back then, we saw the entirety of Russia. Nowadays, we need all we can get. Otto Braun merely snorted and shook his head. And what let reactionaries slip into our ranks? I don't believe we should let any of this silliness occur. This is our revolution, comrades, and we cannot let it be tainted by the thoughts of rev revisionists. He shrugged just my thoughts. For once, Petro was silent, softly biting her thumb and looking just like the slightest bit anxious. Sullivan could see that, but I also had to consider what the others had to say. Comrade Mahiv began staring intently at Sullivan. Your choice is final. You know my opinion, but we must move on, as time is of the essence. Sullivan nodded, and with a breath that gave him enough time to think, he spoke the choice must be made. But that's going to end today's episode, my friends. We've become the Far Eastern Soviet Republic. We have had the second great October Revolution as well. But 
I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow, as hopefully we can push further west and help out and spread the revolution furthermore. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day!